you. I can hear you. Sorry, I was just uh, switching off a few things. I def things on my background. Excellent, excellent. How did I say your name? Lego. Uh, okay. Lego. Uh, yes, it's Lesejo. Lesejo. Yes, yes, that's okay. that's it. And then okay. yours. I hope I'm also getting it right. Yeah, you're, it's yeah. Uh, Martin. Okay. Martin. Yeah. All right. You're saying it well. Oh, okay. Nice. No, nice to be finally chatting to you. Yeah. yeah. That's All good. Right. Um. Yes. Yeah. So tell me. Uh, tell me more. So. Yes. I mean, I think the biggest concern is uh, on our side. Uh, yes. Like I'm, I'm hearing you. You saying you want to get into building tractors. Right now, we're at the stage of uh, we can do a meaningful business around the three D printer. Yes. Um. So that if we're gonna start a chapter for OSC, like as an official OSC chapter. That's the only thing we have as a proven model that that we know we can make it work, and then of course mm -hmm. we'd have to develop it for your supply chains and and you know make sure that you can do it over there too in yes, South Africa. Yes. Um, so, yes. but tell me more about your goals. Like, what I mean, would you be? Are you interested in that part? Because I'm hearing you more about like getting into production. Like, say there's mining or maybe the agricult the machines like tractors and other things maybe more the heavy equipment part that you're interested in yeah, <clears throat> yeah. no that, that's true uh, i think uh, first of all congratulations machine I, I looked at your work i mean pretty impressive uh, and you know i i i am really a a fan first of all before anything so in fact just looking at the whole ose uh, yeah. model and then how the whole vision yeah. is rolling out and how you're planning for the future i think it, it quite fits with uh, the position that i i i i i, I find myself sitting in uh, one as a bit, bit of background on myself uh, yeah. I'm um, more of a generalist uh, yeah. thinker, not necessarily anybody who's uh, trying to box himself, you know, as per maybe what my, my undergrad would be or, or my background is in, in mining or anything like that. But then what I highlighted earlier on, obviously, was just a bit of my background. Uh, mm -hmm. what I've really been involved in or what I'm uh, involved in but uh, not necessarily dictating sort of uh, that I want to sort of be boxed within uh, mm -hmm. that field you know particularly in mining and, 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 and such workers so the machinery one uh, was, 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 was kind, kind of appealing uh, because I've had encounters myself uh, like I said I had a project that I undertook uh, by myself it was more of a DIY project whereby I sort of collaboratively uh, worked through my own resources with the community which is just around the area where I am in South Africa in Rustenburg whereby we developed a, a plant uh, which was basically to serve a purpose for the community to try and be able to extract minerals uh, in their land so I championed that project myself and then obviously uh, we, 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 we encountered a lot of problems in terms of obviously the machinery as, as the normal because we, we, we find ourselves having to buy a lot of stuff and to put up all these plants and it obviously turning out to be very expensive and then uh, I think that for me was a change of mindset because now how I looked at things from that point onwards was that you know it's, it's, it's pretty much expensive even to put up basic things even if you've got the know-how of how to do things and uh, really built things like process plants and all those kind of things uh, the issue was not that is not that knowledge but also just uh, the lack of knowledge in terms of having the capability to be able to even build a uh, those machines or those yeah. those units that you really need to can you know uh, enable such 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 streams so obviously uh, how i think my approach i it has been over the years was just to, to really be sort of in in the middle of the whole value chain whereby i'm just really uh, myself also as an engineer uh, become somebody who does more like package engineering because you have to buy out a lot of stuff and then really put it together for you know something feasible uh, that can work so hence why i'm saying i appreciate the model that uh, OAC is doing and then i understand that you're really trying to tackle a bigger problem uh, looking at the 50 construction sets that you've put up as the sort of the the fundamental starting point so i understand the model completely that you're not really just looking to sell a product a 3d printer or anything yeah. but you also trying to, to find the fit for the vision that you have which is a bigger vision of having total uh, liberation in terms of the the, the 
the the one's own economy, you know. So that's what I'm saying. I I, I do understand what I'm jumping into. So the 3D printer for me, uh, as an individual, I haven't really been much more involved in terms of the technology. But there is nothing limiting me to can you know obviously expand my 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 knowledge. And you know, if it's a starting point, it is a starting point. Uh, so I'll, I'll surely like to be also involved because obviously I I guess a lot will emerge out of uh, this. Uh, I think inception point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's my son. Yeah. So, so really, yes, that's, that's what it is. is. So I, I understand from the enterprise because I think my inquiry as well was also from an enterprise point of view. Uh, but that was before I, I went through elaboratively what you've written down. Uh, uh, then, you know, just to really understand that, you know, from a point of view that you've uh, prototyped a few things. And then at this point, you are much more sort of comfortable in terms of uh, the 3D printing side of things. Obviously, while other things are being developed uh, in line with the the ultimate or the absolute uh, yeah. goal of achieving the whole set is so i i think i really comprehend the model uh, in that yeah. uh, phase so the idea that we're using that to bootstrap fun like basically if we work out the business model on a 3d printer the intended yeah. production time is like we spend a week doing that production run shouldn't take more than a week and a month and that's how yes. we're designing it here just really optimized and all the workflow um, the productivity is high. We can, we know we can produce X many printers. Um, like with a team of four people, we can probably do like uh, eight printers per day. Uh, so like two two people, uh, two printers per person per day. So if you talk about like say a quota of say producing like twenty printers, um, you know that would be like five days with uh, four people, and that's like being. Um, that's with four people now you can get you can have more people in a production run like I think mm -hmm. optimal number maybe like 12 or 24 so we can scale that up we know how to do that uh, mm -hmm. we've had workshops where we build 12 printers in a, in a day actually with 12 12 mm -hmm. participants uh, mm -hmm. so we're saying that okay here's a known business model we know that 3d printing is hot and that's a mm -hmm. that's a product that can sell mm -hmm. not sure how well that works in South Africa, but I mean, if, mm -hmm. if you were to do it, you'd be, from what I can tell, the first 3D printer manufacturer in South Africa. I don't think you've, you guys have any you know, 3D printer manufacturers, mm -hmm. do, do you? Nah, we, we, we're not up to speed with that. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of buyouts, I think, from the States. Uh, I think the, the, mostly the leading manufacturers are that side. So locally, nah, I don't know of any. Uh, I know a few years I was doing a project. Uh, I think there's guys who came and they were trying to do some uh, 3D printing into the mining sphere, whereby they were actually taking the actual platinum and trying to make jewelry and all those kind of things in, in, in that aspect. But I don't know how successful. I didn't really follow the... The, the 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 guys quite well, uh, but obviously in terms of the big players, there isn't much uh, in terms of uh, p people who supply 3D print printers, particularly builders. Yes. Yeah. So the market, uh, I think the next, uh, sorry, my friend. Uh, so the market is quite there, you know, one, because I, I would understand the, the additive manufacturing side and obviously also dealing with a lot of mining as the industry uh, where I am and obviously the industrial side in South Africa, whereby, uh, I mean, there, there is there is quite a substantive market, uh, which really needs to be, I think, a, a bit of disruption or alternative ways of doing things, you know, from the traditional. So 3D printing, in fact, appeals quite a lot to me. Uh, and I really believe that it, it's something that can really be pushed into the market uh, quite quite successfully. You know, as I've highlighted previously, uh, mining uh, and a few, obviously, industrial uh, sites like car manufacturers and all those uh, that might need, you know, a bit of support. And just generally, you know, your everyday product. Like I've seen what you do with the, the cordless drillers. I mean, I'm sure there's a, there's a market. You've done the breakdown. I've seen the economics around it. Uh, so, which I, I think also a market like that. And just apart from the sales, I think the educational uh the educational side of things as well you know uh, i mean it, it, it's quite something that you can really push because there's a lot of technical uh, 
and, and, and sort of STEM, you know, science, technology, engineering, and mathematical campaigns that we're trying to push uh, locally here, you know, on the innovative side, uh, obviously trying to make production much more efficient, much more cleaner, much more greener. Like you say, let loss, a, a, a lot less uh, labor involved, uh, like a 3D printer would tick most of those boxes, you know, as an opposed to the traditional manufacturing way, ways of manufacturing uh, small parts, particularly small parts. I mean, as a metallurgist myself, I know I did foundry. Uh, it was one of my majors, you know, and I just know how, how complex it is sometimes to get things done, especially w w things to do with geometry and a lot of things that can really be uh, complex mm -hmm. geometries things that can be achieved through 3D printing. So I really know the, the power and the potential in the, in the, in the, in the technology itself. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What's, uh, what's your vision of what you'd like to see, like say, and you know, like say this is successful. What would you like to see around you happen? So you're talking about Rustenburg? That's yeah. Mm -hmm. So what would you like to see? Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, like you say, it, it, it's very primitive. You know, the, the, the background, I come from the place, I'm, I'm born and raised here. Uh, the, 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 with a kind of uh, sort of uh, richness in the minerals and, and, you know, with the surrounding and the local, uh, there's always been a, 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 I think, a perception of being difficult to sort of achieve things whereby people have ownership of their own sort of minerals and people are able to sort of liberate themselves by basically becoming their own sort of a, a economic I'm just trying to look for the, the right way to say but in essence what I'm trying to say liberation you know economically so what is happening currently uh, the the area it's quite uh, rich in minerals as I've, I've, I've explained I think earlier so uh, the thing that is lacking the most obviously is technology and the and obviously the building of the machines you know at a small scale level and then right now the we we seeing a lot of uh, traditional uh, business that are operated by big capital so it's big companies that are really big corporates and really coming getting everything from uh, from the the communities and then just by virtue of not having you know the power and the muscle to can do things uh, ourselves so obviously we're sitting with a community that obviously they are not really realizing any opportunities with what is surrounding them uh, there's constant uh, there's a belief or the mindset is that, you know, you need a, to partner with somebody big to can do almost anything, you know. And I, I, I myself as a person who's really been trying to collaborate or sorry to contribute towards these communities is that I've been trying to look for ways that can sort of be, uh, I can implement with the communities, show them how things are done, you know, like be, uh, basically building small uh, processing plants, uh, which are not necessarily complex or difficult or anything new, but then at least, you know, in a, in a scalable way that a community can learn how to build it, scale it up to whatever capacities they want it to be, uh, be able to op operate and uh, sort of see the profit and live off that uh, sort of thing. So that was, has been my, my biggest drive. So, I mean, I was looking at technologies, simple technologies, like what they apply in also in agriculture, because normally what we apply in, in mining would apply uh, to the agricultural sector as well. And Rustenberg is also an agricultural place as well as the second uh, economic contributor. So obviously a lot of the, the Machineries that I was particularly looking at things like your optical sorters, uh, which I, I I think they they are they are quite basic uh, tools or equipments that are found in the states. But you come uh, locally this site, you find that there's challenges because you can't really access those things. And then I've done a project myself whereby, but it, although it was for a client, it wasn't for myself privately or the community. It was uh, we basically. Uh, Build or design the plant uh, with an XRF sort of based sorter, whereby they use the technology to sort and uh, sort of get the minerals, extract the minerals from the uh, basically separated from the the dump that we don't want, you know, to to high grade minerals to sort of uh, upgrade or concentrate the the minerals. So I mean, those kind of technologies, I I, I always felt like they are very simple. Uh, things that can one can implement and collaboratively working around such technologies can really achieve a greater goal because the application is not just in South Africa. Once uh, 
uh, the, we, we see success it, it's, it's easy to also roll it out to other areas you know in Africa whereby you know they the east need for for such uh, digitalization tools or technology or, or robotics or so similar to the 3d printer because uh, things like sorters and uh, things are, are, are you know within the the, the sort of they, they answer a bigger a bigger problem so mine is really in a nutshell Martian, is to really answer the bigger the bigger problem you know of uh, having people being freed or being knowing really how to sort of work their lands uh, having answers to their own problems everyday problems that they, they do you they see face, any you other know? people around you that are entrepreneurial like that or it's kind of like the pressed mentality <laughs> yeah they, they 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 are there a few uh obviously people like myself we push a lot of uh, education to try and get people interested so i i, I myself I'm, I'm seeing a lot of uh interest from the the, the particularly the, the younger guys uh because i mean you're sitting with a lot of uh, saturated market with graduates who are not really uh sort of prepared to do the dirty work but then on the contrary to that you find guys that are really not much of a uh, literate people but then they are willing to sort of do take up technical skills and with an understanding that you know it, it, it's it's a, just a change of mindset that will uh, sort of make them free and then they can own up things within their own so basically you know the mindset is there and then obviously with a bit of training uh, and uh, with people like myself giving their time to try and develop others and then just show them how to sort of uh, tackle problems that they face instead of you know uh, I guess maybe yeah so there are there are people like yeah. that quite a few XRF, you said um, xrf sorting you're talking about x-ray fluorescence yes x, x, x ray fluorescence yes that's correct yes so, so what we you, what happens what, okay sorry Masha. what's the what's the goal like do you think about it creating local processing capacity or are you talking about export uh, well, like I'm saying, you know, for a process plant, obviously export, you would have to, you're talking big tonnage, you're talking big capacities, uh, local market, you, you're talking small capacities, but currently now the matters of Paranda with, if you do something on your own, uh, normally the export market, market works best for the local communities. And then what they do is they do collaborative or uh, selling of their products. I mean, I've been involved myself in, like I said, in a project whereby we were extracting uh, chromite in 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 one of the communities and what happens is that they they really we we sell to the export market uh but then uh the can you get me some chromite the, <laughs> How, i'm serious uh, what what does it take like okay. okay let's let's explore a potential scenario so what can you actually sure. ship a container of it to me Yes, I, 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 at the moment things are a bit slow because of obviously the COVID-19. I'm sure you know what is happening. But obviously if things are normal, yes, we can, we are able to do so the... So who's got uh, the... Because I do... Who's got yes, the ownership okay. of the land? It's the community. So what had happened is that because of the previous historical issues in South Africa, uh, where you find communities sitting with a lot of remnants and uh, land, which is really rich in terms of these minerals. So in the current pro the project that I I, I, I I was involved in, it's it's community owned land and minerals. They so own the what the about whole... what about the the mm. big multinationals? Do they have they buy out some of that land, or what do they do? Mm, no. They, they unfortunately with the multinationals like your okay i don't want to mention names but then what would happen is this with the big corporate companies is that they they own a obviously the bigger part of the market so they already have sitting with a uh, big mining rights and all those kind of things so what you find is this pockets of land that is in the community hands it's not it's something that you know historically might have been in uh, forcefully in in the wrong ownerships uh, or wrong hands but then currently it's been sort of the government has been trying to give it back to the communities the rightful people that are owning that land so that's how the people find themselves with uh, such fortunes and then but it, you i mean you're talking compared to the multinationals, the land that is in the community, you're talking a small proportion as compared to what the, the big multinationals would be owning. So, so for example... Tell me, more about I, that. tell me more about that. So the multinationals, what, what happened there? They simply bought out all this land? No, no, no. What what would happen is that the multinationals... So historically, a bit of uh, history on the mining yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. Is that, uh, 
Yes, you, we we uh, most of the land was in the hands of I think the government, and then obviously uh, over the years it went into private ownership, and then what had happened is that how the 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 application for mining and processing works is that you you then approach this the sort of the dignitary or the the ministry for that uh, particular. Uh, fault of faculty and then what would happen is that the, the 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 license are not issued on the virtue of ownership of land so you anybody can apply and then you don't necessarily have to need to own the land so you find that the land is not even owned by the multinationals but then they listen from the private owners you know collectively uh, and then uh, they would just own what they call the mining rights for that particular mineral of interest and then you find that the uh, they own most of the the mining rights on a, 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 a big part of land but which is not necessarily owned by the multinationals but then they've got their own mutual agreements between the owners of the land and the and the and the and the mineral owners and then what would happen is that now when the whole restitution take place is that the the the, the government will then take the land back uh, in terms of the land ownership but not necessarily the business rights uh, but just in terms of shift the the land ownership back to the people that were native maybe to that area. So I think it's more like a similar story if what I read about the Las Vegas, uh, I don't know. I think it's the native people who would be owning the land and then, but then the multinationals will be owning the business rights. But then it's a mutual agreement, uh, uh, very stable environment because the economy and everything else, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's quite, so it, the, the model works at this point in time because, and then so, yeah, so the, there is that sort of the, the arrangement in place whereby the multinationals work with the, the communities who are the landowners. Or so the, yeah, so that's how it so, normally works. So you're saying they have they have the mineral rights? Yes. So, so how much how the, much land? So is that the land you'd be wanting to work, or would you want to, to work the community land? No, uh, the, the land I'm talking about is not my only interest. I'm, I was, it was just to put out an example of what I've done previously yeah. uh, as an idea of sort of working with uh, people in terms of, you know, a sort of creating like a mutual uh, sort of work with somebody that uh, particularly is not just one person because I'm trying to follow the, the idea or the philosophy that uh, the, the, the goal uh, is to try and empower as many people as possible with the, uh, the works that would normally be beneficial to one person if the information is not shared or the kind of work so what would happen is that the land that is owned now currently that I've been talking about so much is not even uh, my 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 own sort of land or anything like that. I was just merely a uh, part of a a, a a a a process to try and uplift the community's life. But I'm in no way really uh, for my long term looking at that particular community or anything. I was just looking at uh, generally the whole the the communities around myself you know but in terms of myself obviously my goal was to obviously try and have my own facilities whereby I I Sorry, my friend. Yes. Uh, so just to have my own facilities and really where I can do my own developments, but then the target will be obviously the communities, different communities, not necessarily one particular community. So say, uh, do you have land right now? Um, I was in a process of getting land. I do have land, not that big. So I, I, in fact, just before the call, I was uh, talking. Uh, so the, I'm, I'm, I'm in a process of acquiring a piece of land. Is that is that land have minerals on it or? No, it's it will be just pure agricultural land. Yes, so how it, much, it's how much not acreage? really. Or hectares? Uh, hectare, it's about thirteen hectares. Yeah. Uh, yes. And is your vision on this just just to see how it, it could work? So help the local people. Um, like say say we develop machinery for small scale mining or appropriate technology based mining. <laughs> would you envision? What I'd like to see is what about if we make the processing happen so that we can actually make value added products from that? Like for example, steel rods, mm. chrome rods mm. for the three D printer or machines mm. and stuff mm. like that. Is that is that mm. on your radar or not really? 
in fact it will go in perfectly because i'll tell you what has been happening even in the community uh you know as much as we're doing processing and all this uh locally here still a lot of that gets exported uh, and for one reason is that we we don't own the whole value chain or we don't locally make products a uh, finished product like steel product like rods and your what other whatever other uh, form of materials like your stainless steels and all that so what had happened is that we partially process up to a i think a a certain level and then a lot of stuff that tell me more really tell me more detail what to what to what level needs. you're just talking about to, to, to a level just before your so it's more like your pre uh, concentration uh, levels i would say for example the chrome the current market uh, the export you're looking at about we're exporting at about 50 percent chrome content to now uh, abroad whereby we don't really do a lot of fairness technology i uh, saw so you've got fairnesses as, as one of your, your your targets as well so we don't really have a lot of fairnesses for example to obviously take it further to the final uh, sort of uh, product what's the word you're you saying fairnesses what fairness Yes, I'm, I'm saying we no, we normally concentrate uh, up to a stage. For example, in your in your process uh, 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 flow diagram, we would normally do it to just before you put it in a furnace. Oh, so furnace. there isn't a lot yeah. of furnace. Yes, so we don't have a lot of furnace uh, furnaces that are in small scale uh, sort of. Uh, so that would be uh, also the niche because I mean, you want to do we, it? We let's do it. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to do it, my son. That's why, I, I, yeah. Let's yes. do it. That's what this I is want. good. Yeah. Uh, can you, like right now, is it actually yes. feasible that you can ship a, a load, like a like a container of chromite, let's say, to Kansas City? Yeah, okay, I'm not, yes. I'm sure I can. Uh, obviously, there's, there's going to be custom. So we normally... So tell so, me, tell, no, um, do you know anything about that? Like what the costs involved with shipping? Is this like a private boys game where you still have to be big to get, get through the hoops? Or no. can we actually do it? No, uh, up to a point. Okay, I, 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 I'm a seller, in fact, myself. I've, I've sold. I build a plant, and then we're selling the, the minerals. But how it normally works, we, I normally never get to the point of export and, and, and how it, it gets taken out of the country. So I normally end at the... Because we normally... We used to sell it on an FOB sort of basis, whereby the, yeah. the seller will just come and buy it as we take it off the plant. Okay. So I haven't really been explored that market, but it's not some, anything difficult, I can assure you. I'm sure it's easy to, to can ship it. By the way, I've got a a family a, a member of that side who lives that side. I think he's in the state of New York, so he's a cousin of mine. So I think he does a lot of export, and I can always find out from him how difficult it is to. But to organize it locally is not a big problem. The issue is just on the export side. I don't know how it gets. Well, we are looking. <laughs> we yeah, are looking okay. for some chrome chrome rods that okay. we'd like to make. Yeah. I mean, seriously, take a look at it. Let's take a look at what okay. would it cost me to get a container, yeah. meaning a. Uh, Okay. shipping container of chromite yes, ore yes. what's the grade do you have a specification for the grade of chromite ore? Yes. what is it what's the grade yes we, we we do we normally transport to the spec what they call a met spec and uh, we can sometimes even metallurgical specification yes okay. so the which is about 42 44 uh, percent oh. of chromite content with less than i think about 60 i think it's about two percent or three percent silica uh, inside so we because we normally just put it through a spiral wash uh, so we don't really do much upgrade like i was saying so obviously the next step from, from there it's, it's perfect fit for a furnace for example you'll put it directly into a furnace uh, and then depending on what you want to do if you want to make alloys ferro alloys i don't know what would be the next step that you want to sort of pursue uh, but yeah so we normally take it up to the metallurgical specification which is about 40 40 40 44 percent we can take it further but it's just that it's much more economical for small scale to take it to that point because obviously if you want to take it further now for example to foundry grade you'd have to do much more uh, work you know at a few stages of spiral uh, concentration and illustrators and all those kind of things so just to avoid a big plant or massive plant uh, we we normally cut it at about the entry level which is the met metallurgical grade level yeah so yes so i i just want, don't I, 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 let me Please, I also comprehend uh, the idea. Are you trying to put something to a furnace so that you make maybe make like stainless steel? Yeah, uh, sure. Particularly for we don't for have that. the okay. We don't have the furnace yet, but I mean, uh, um, yes, yes. But 
metallurgy that's part of our mm -hmm. i mean hot metal rolling and induction furnace is part of cold what working we i saw that yeah yes. uh, what we want to do we haven't done it yet but uh yes. i'm i would like to develop this for the small scale i mean i i mean for us it's a very Thank simple you. thing it's like we relocalize production yes. simple circular economy so, true uh there's yes. um yes. you can make a case for global supply chains but you can also make a case for local supply mm -hmm. chains and more appropriate ways of doing things which i think if you look at a whole yes. big picture i think that makes sense to to um basically yes. have a distributed economy right so that's yes. that's the whole yes. principle yes. right yes. um so we would uh, we understand there's a gap in terms yep. of what happens with big industry there is nothing happening in the smaller scales right it's not a question yep. of feasibility it's a question of how uh, economic systems have developed over time through centralized interests so uh, there's alternatives we don't believe in technological determinism which says you can only do something a certain way there's different ways to do things at different scales and there's advantages to going to smaller scales like more empowerment more distributed wealth I mean so so that we're, we're essentially solving for the last frontier of the economy which is about distribution of wealth which hasn't been solved it's Not our sure. economy really sucks at it so yeah. so you got to fix that fix that part yeah. 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 Um, and this will be part of it so so to get like at first let's just get 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 some basics on what that would look like is it actually feasible for us to run some experiments um actually yes. smelting it smelting the stuff induction furnace mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. um electric yes or arc reduction processes Oxygen, yes. like we we do yes. think about things like mm. okay if you've got silicon arc. then you reduce it through an arc to make yes. sil silicon dioxide so so silicon from Smack. sand yeah. right mm. Mm. Uh, mm. all of that is similar type of stuff it's electrolysis sure uh, so yes. uh, that's good wow that's yes. good stuff. No, no, no. but but yes. tell me more um what what do you think like when you sold the did you actually sell the chromite Yes, it's still How the chromite. How much do you sell a container load for? Do you do it by uh, ton or? Come again, Mata? I missed the question. How much? What's the price? Do you sell it by the ton, by container oh, load? Yes, yes. I think to get that, because we normally use uh, at, at, at FOB, I think the ethanol was going for, it's a little bit lower now, uh, because I guess uh, the demand isn't that much. But mm -hmm. then obviously, on, on normal uh, terms, you're looking at about a thousand rent, which is about what I think it's a, uh, I'm not, I'm not really, I think it's about $80 per ton. That's the around the around about the let me just make sure that I, I'm I get it. Six, yeah. About $60, $60 to a thousand rand. Yes, so it's about 60, yeah, because it's about a thousand rand, yes, so it's about 60, uh, 60 rands per ton of that 44 percent chrome. So it's, it's not, uh, so that's yeah, so I mean, you even get it depending on the, the time, uh, uh, you can even get it lower than that. Sometimes you can even pay less than that. So that's what I'm saying to to ship obviously uh, to a state container is not I don't think it's even a, a difficult process that one I think I can it's something that I can uh, source and manage uh, uh, but ongoing obviously for sustainability yes so the answer would be because like you saying I mean I think uh, I looked at the model that you went I think where you were explaining how the developing countries and then uh, with the current economy etc like how the developing countries and the developed countries like the states and South Africa which is South Africa being the developing and the US probably being the most developed country where by you explaining the secondary and the primary uh, 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 sort of uh, motives of the economy so I think South Africa we find ourselves as a developing country pretty much at the primitive end of things whereby even if we have there's little technology and less more uh, a much more labor intense uh, stuff because things are a little bit more uh, behind as we compare to the to the big uh, developed countries like the US, the US whereby you guys will probably be having technology and all the right stuff uh, in that place so 
so it, 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 it so it sort of completes the model uh what we'll need this side is more what you guys would have and then what you guys would need is what you guys what would have this side so that's why i think it, it makes sense in a collaborative way to can have some some sort of way also to work around those things because to complete a, a flow sheet for us is, is much more difficult because of the challenges that we have that i've specified that on the technology side you it, it's a little bit behind but honestly, yeah. yeah so you're saying yeah. about 20 say 30 tons of ore in a container so like 2400 us dollars per container uh, so the machine, let me just follow the mathematics. Yes, what was the question? Well, you said a thousand rand a ton of yes of met spec chromite. Yes, yes, forty four percent chrome. So about thirty yeah. tons per container. Uh, yes, that would be about a truck. Was a thirty ton? Is it about forty ton or thirty ton? I'm, I'm, I'm uh, the sh the shipping container. Yeah, yeah, but so normally a load would be about thirty. Yeah, thirty tons. Yeah. So about so two thousand US by, dollars for a container. It, that's correct. Yes. I'll take that any time. Okay. All right. <laughs> that's tell fine. Me, I can. Tell me the it. shipping. Sh uh, would you mind actually following up with your cousin and tell me? Uh, check out. Ask mm -hmm. him to check if he can deliver to Kansas City. There's a port in Kansas, Kansas City. City. Okay. Port I just of need Kansas to take City, it. Missouri. Oh yes, I I think it's quite easy. Yes, yes. Now that's that's fine. That should be easy to do. I'll I'll, I'll work on that one. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let me know. Uh, okay. what, when do you think you can find is out? There is there movement in terms of things now? I don't know how strict the things are in the states because I mean I I think there's a lot of issues now obviously with COVID nineteen. I don't know how we work things. What oh, what yeah, would yeah, be yeah. your timing like? Oh, there's like? there's a are lot you... of issues. Yeah, shipping. Uh, there's shipping. I mean, shipping is still oh, available. Okay. Uh, right. Yeah, I'm not sure about if like if the okay it may be shut down i don't know but i mean there's yeah, a lot of traffic yes, still but i mean there's yes. issues like for example i just went to the US, u.s post office they're not flying anything everything is going by road oh, as yes. an example but yeah l okay. let's find out but then sometime we'll return to normalcy so so let's see what sure. happens <laughs> yes 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 no definitely well, this yes, would be, because I'm, I'm, no i mean yes. this would be completely uh, fascinating to see this kind of yeah. thing happen because we basically say that on any parcel of yeah. land like here yeah. we're saying we can create advanced civilization you can you can yeah. uh, smelt silicon you can Correct. extract yes. aluminum from clay if you want to if you have the energy to yeah. do that now in your if you've yeah. got your your area there you can make stainless steel pretty easily do you also <laughs> have um, do you also have yeah. iron ore there too of course, yes. There's a lot of we've got hematite. We've got even the uh, yeah. So we've got a lot of iron ore. In fact, it's more abundant even than the chromite itself. Wow. There's a lot of iron. Yeah. So I, I think we we're pretty blessed in terms of the minerals. So the normal occurrence would be obviously in Rustenburg you have your vanadium, uh, the titanium, and uh, there's a lot of the ba other base metals like nickel, uh, copper, and your. Uh, cobalt which are more associated with the pgms so the blessing is that you get an, a pgm or which is normally associated with the uh with the with the the, the 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 three base metals that i mentioned nickel cobalt and and the uh, but those are normally the biggest target by the big big boys uh, because platinum it's much more intensively involved to sort of extract i guess with the current flow sheet uh, and then obviously uh, that is one area that I've also been trying to also wow. explore a bit in terms of simplifying the, the flow sheets that we're currently using because obviously the current flow sheet is quite complex. I'm sure you'll be very familiar in terms of the platinum extraction. It's a little bit more uh, involved and, you know, on the energy side and for small scale, sometimes it becomes a little bit of a... a but if you've, we've got the energy and the technology, I mean, those are some of the things that are also sort of locally easily to sort of find. Not that easy, but then obviously we can also source those and then uh iron ore uh, there's a lot so much that i i, I think even the the uh the, the 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 even the big boys have got their own share but then there's still a lot that is still left in the hands of the communities and the local people so the, uh, the, uh, oh, sorry my chat i yes. was gonna ask you the multinationals that are around you is yes. it uh african south african companies or global nah. companies american 
a British American. What are the companies? Uh, Anglo American, like they are even my, my biggest client now. Uh, so Anglo American is one of the biggest uh, mining company there. What's uh, it called? Enron. Uh, Anglo American, Anglo for like English, as in Anglo? English, British. Anglo, yes, Anglo American, yes. So it's like a British American company, and then there's uh, previously I think got PLC. Yes, that's the one. Yes, it says yes. it's a South African multinational mining company. Well, I mean the name says it. It's I think maybe they've got uh -huh. assets, uh, almost uh, most of the assets, but it's actually I think an American because the head office is even in London. London. Yes, yes. And oh yeah, then, by J.P. Morgan and Company. That's great. Yes, yes. <laughs> so it's an American. We get very British quickly company. to the bottom of this of yeah, industrial I, history I can here. Tell. <laughs> Yes, yes. So, and then you get the likes of Impala Platinum. I think it's also British, but then obviously we, uh, flying the flag as if it's South African. Uh, so <laughs> it's mostly from from abroad. It's mostly from abroad, honestly speaking. Yeah. Um, yes. What so, are the politics around that? Is that? Um, I mean, can you talk to the politics yeah. around that with your national policies? You guys love yeah, that. No. You guys are like, yeah, yeah, guys, just have it extract all our wealth it's good for the economy <laughs> no what's, what's what do they say about it is it uh is there any controversy around it or uh do you mean sorry Marshall, I, i'm just are you asking about just the general uh, political climate or are you asking around policy because uh, uh, around the climate around the minerals like for example <laughs> if you decide to yeah. to to make your minerals and turn them into yes. value-added products uh, are you going to get resistance? Uh, yeah, yeah. Fortunately, in my case, I'm, I'm somebody who's been consulting, in fact, in that sphere, you know, in terms of organizing mineral uh, rights for small people. Uh, I've been, uh, I mean, bargaining for communities and all those kind of things. So I'm quite familiar with the process. Of course, it is, uh, there is a bit of politics involved as, as normal because of the, the way the economy works. Because obviously the big boys are trying to put a red tape in everything that you know the communities get not much but then there is a way of working around it uh, particularly uh, one thing of interest would be things like uh, the, the 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 recycling as well i mean there's been a lot of people who are who are trying at their backyards a lot of recycling uh, so i know of small guys that are successful at the back of uh, trying to do their own thing without really following the 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 the, the the, the traditional routes but it is possible to do to can do a complete extraction there's going to be a little bit of resistance but it can be overcome without really much challenge all you because they, the thing is that the government has got a buy-in so they've got certain uh, schemes that they have set because i mean they they also targeting uh, small guys and communities particularly uh, to also try and do things on their own so they even set up i think there's a department of trade and industry which is particularly set up to can try and help people with such initiatives whereby they can see their com communities or individual people owning their own uh, sort of facilities in fact because that, it does help is that supported at the national level or is it is yes. that corrupt yes no, that's that's at the national level. That's at the national level. Yes. So they've got the. I think you you can have a look at it. They quite. Uh, the, it's called the DTI. It's a it's a it's a national department of trade and industry, whereby they really support the the small industrialists and people who are really trying to take initiatives. I mean, I I'm, I'm a member of that. I've been. Uh, it's just I haven't really been. I've been a bit dormant over the years. But then, yeah, I used to be part of. Can we the get them to to fund your operation? Well, I, I think funding is a bit of a myth at the moment uh, mm -hmm. because there's been a lot of mismanagement in terms of funding. So depending on the government, uh, I would say myself personally, it wouldn't be a route I'll try and pursue because I guess uh, like any other government, you know, uh, Africa is known for this bad politics whereby, you know, there's been a lot of historical uh, mismanagement of you know what they so the policies were set up correctly and everything was there it's in place but then it's just on paper really but if you want to see things through uh, the mentality that you have to adopt you really have to be resilient and be a DIY kind of a person you know so hence why I said you know for myself if I I, I, I take up anything I would rather comfortably to see through uh, I'd rather try and source from myself or 
you know, the, uh, my close contacts and not necessarily pursue the government route because it's a, it's a little bit more uh, challenging, I would say. So you're, yeah. the way you, Sorry. So, so for your yes. full-time work right now, so you're, you're a consultant yes. to the mining industry? Correct. Yes, yes, that's correct, Machan. And yes. that's and that's with, with all the multinationals and all that primarily. Yes, because it's not long. Uh, I think I was working for about not until the last three years, and then I think the company is about two and a half years old. It's not that long that I started being my own man. Uh, but then obviously a lot of support I've been getting, particularly from the same company, the Anglo American. Those are the guys that have been really. A supportive of our company so obviously that the work that we do is quite decent work for them uh, and then they were happy really with what they are getting in terms of uh, our work so they keep us sort of in business uh, but then yeah so that's what I do at the moment so but really that's not even my vision because I think it was just a matter of really trying to uh, sort of have uh, making it out on my own because I was first trying out a things just to not be so that i can be economically stable and then obviously but in terms of sustainability i don't really think consulting is the most sustainable business because also it doesn't also line up with my sort of visions for 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 now and obviously in the longer future mm -hmm. but yeah at the moment i do yes but then my strongest interest obviously it's 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 similar it's ownership you know power in my own hence you know our people's hands and everybody else so economic yeah. basically like you you'd subscribe a lot to the local economic transformation pretty much uh reforming the system from its centralized to a decentralized and empower, empowering Correct. the local peoples 100 percent yes my friend yes mm -hmm. so because yes i mean it, 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 i think it's due time if if if, if not uh, the best time to do it now you know because you I, I mean a, a lot of us are, are, are we, i'm sitting with a lot of information you sitting with a lot of information yeah. i mean i followed your program quite well and then uh you know just to to try and uh i think coming together will really answer the bigger problem like you put it uh you know to that they, they to, to to try and solve the biggest problems you know and with simple solutions without necessarily reinventing anything yeah but then yeah, by yeah, yeah. Uh, working think, together well yes, said that's, I mean, that's yes. exactly right I, I i i looked at your tech funny enough because i was in a position when i i did the small plan that i was talking about i mean i struggled for for years uh, to to even Thing to can buy a front end loader, believe it or not. So I was just blown away when I saw your tractor on 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 online, the, the first live yeah. track, and you know, following up to the the last version six, and I, I I was amazed. I said I just didn't believe how 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 you made it look easy, <laughs> but yeah, I mean it, it really shows the power of you know something that people are at work and really collaboratively. I mean, if you can do that in seven days, I struggled for two years to try and raise the funds just to buy a second-hand uh, front-end loader. Wow, just to we be can build those things in one day. I, I mean, is. we basically, like, it's kind mm. of funny. When we did the plant out of the, the mm. nut crop here, yep. we basically built the machine for the planting, and then wow. we took it apart. Wow. It's great. It's when you think about it, that's that's yeah. pretty insane. Yeah. Uh, I didn't really yeah. think about it. It just occurred to me that it is like because someone mm. asked me, "Well, can I see all your machines here?" And and it's mm. like it must be amazing. I said, "Well, we don't really have anything here because you know once we build something, we we kind of like take it apart and use it for other things because we're still prototyping." Wow. <laughs> but that's a that's a good point. That's that's, that's, that's so pretty cool. good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, so yeah. really. It, it, it's, it's mind-blowing uh, at the same time humbling yeah because i mean that's my approach as well because i i, yeah. I look i haven't really done a lot on my own uh, but then obviously the ideas are there and then obviously the vision is there so i mean seeing what you're doing and then i i think it can really complement us very well because yeah we, we also are about, yeah, trying to to get things differently i mean i mean i was looking at just the the power that uh uh, it, it could go into this thing uh, but the simple things that you well you you'll think they are simple things but those things are really an answer to a lot of uh, a lot of civilization yeah yeah i mean are you familiar power. with hydraulic power like basically how we do things with yes. the modular power units and tractors and things yes yes i saw the i i read about it i'm not really 
very powerful in terms of the hydraulics because uh, I think there's more on the mechanical side. But I'm, with the basics, I'm, I'm I'm quite familiar with the basics for that. Uh, yeah, especially I mean, what goes into that and the 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 power cube. Yeah, yeah. The and yes, yes. And the modular concept. I mean, to be able to scale up anyhow, there's no limitation. I mean, I I saw how you went from a a small uh, steer 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 skid. And then you can actually modularize it to become this big uh, uh, dozer or, or one of those huge equipment. And I really follow the, the the I think the first principles of how you you really trying to achieve that the scalability and yeah. the yeah. sort of the design for life and the efficiencies and all those kind of things. So that's what I'm saying. It, it, it's really mind blowing because yeah. it's, I, I think Absolutely. it's engineering at its basics yet at its uh, answering the the. the big complex yeah uh, i mean the good yeah. news that i found out is that with the basic advanced technology that we have access to today and the modularity yes. afforded by hydraulic mm. power drive mm. i mean you, people can build anything these days but pe people don't know that you know nobody knows yeah. that yeah. Um, yeah very few people know it some people who are uh maybe yeah. the people that do know it are the very mechanical people who are just um kind of the dirty jobs yes. people but maybe they yeah. a lot of the people yes. don't have the vision that oh well this could actually change the world you know yep. so it yep. takes a combination yep. of those two sides yes. yeah um so um yes what so what, what's your thoughts on uh the immersion in terms of are you interested in starting a, a formal osc chapter yes be incorporated Obviously. as an as a non-profit or like some kind of an organization for the common good because that's what we wanted to do <clears throat> yes yes I, I i i i saw that yeah obviously i'll be interested like i've taken you up on the micro enterprising and obviously starting the chapter but obviously uh uh there was obviously a few questions that i also wanted to so tell me sort of, yeah tell me tell me yeah. more about what questions you have and what what else <laughs> okay all right so i just wanted to particularly i looked at the program uh okay the 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 the, the, the biggest question that i uh, wanted to know in terms of one taking up a program like this there's a one year option and there's the two years option i understand yes. one will be probably fast tracking and then the other one will be much more uh, uh forgiving in terms of time so but my biggest question is that uh what are the what is the real output is it a uh, so if you micro enterprise the OSC, uh, and then you obviously by that time you'll be learned enough or literal enough with the the whole principle, the whole uh, business vision and all that. But in terms of the one on 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 one side, how 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 are you? Is is the aim to to do like a university? Because I saw how you you explained the model that it, it's non-existent at the moment. What yeah. you're really trying to achieve, but it's a combination of industrial. Uh, like an industrial site versus oh, yeah. a combined with the university years. Okay, so well, let me explain what the thing is. So a chapter is, so you got to, yeah. our, our model of change is bootstrap okay. funding. We don't want to okay. necessarily rely on uh, any grants cause, or foundations sure. or because they can't really see this at this time. Now, yes. the model there is we start with a chapter that does a proven okay. business model that's collaborative. We all yes. collaborate on a product. We make it better okay. and okay. so forth. But it's a bootstrap funding mechanism. Now the chapter yeah. thing, that would be on okay. a growth track. Like if you're okay. if you're ambitious and you want to go further, the initial yes. start is a, a chapter is you requires a small micro factory. If you talk about a yeah. campus, you're talking about a land based facility, that's the evolution yes. of that. Yes. So it's a facility that offers the education. Uh, it's like a university because it's got housing, it's got production, it's mm -hmm. got real living. So it's a it's a residential facility like a university campus. Uh, oh, oh, uh, but see. it carries on the further mission. Once you get on board as a stable chapter, mm -hmm. you've got an economic mm -hmm. base. Then you can talk about expanding your programs to what we have here. We have the minimal here. We've got some housing here. Mm -hmm. We've got the the micro factory. We've got agriculture and just an integrated facility that the model is we're saying okay we're gonna create units of societal organization that are like I mean what you talk about the freedom or liberation of people these are units of points of light that show that you can live peacefully with the environment and with the rest of the world uh, with global collaboration so so it's a facility that's a real working 
it's a mashup of the university and eco industrial park mm -hmm. a farm mm -hmm. a business incubator and all of that in one it also does oh. land stewardship so part of our work is we want to reform agriculture too to, to a more uh, perennial based form of agriculture so we've got some experiments in plant breeding here as well uh, that we do but it's uh, it's basically your village your global village yeah. 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 so that's like if you're interested in that that's not what we're talking about yes. here but if you start a chapter yes. Yes. we have a growth path that that's your first step start a chapter mm -hmm. you know the yes. first thing you need to learn is how to produce things and how to collaborate Yes, yes, yes. So collaboration and production. Yes, and then yes. from that we but, can move on to expanding the programs, running programs like immersion trainings like the Summer of Extreme Design Build which was canceled this year um, and prog doing more, more things yes. on a land-based facility where yes. then you can be talking things about like okay how do we develop uh, enterprises around agriculture like aquaponic mm -hmm. greenhouses or community supported agriculture operations so it's a it's basically your civilization on a small scale operation mm -hmm. yes, but that's that's yes. the growth track we're our goal yeah. is to develop technology because we've we've got we're like 30 percent done with all the stuff yeah. okay um, if you see the status of completion on the wiki mm. but I saw that here. yeah until 2028 is our cutoff for okay whatever technology we have by that time we're gonna run with it and run with it into the next phase which is now focusing on building the 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 OSC campuses worldwide and as we go to that I would like to create as many chapters as possible that becomes this become the seeds of the campuses later on because we have to onboard people like we don't just start a campus out of nowhere you have to <laughs> that, that's a big entrepreneurial endeavor yeah. that's 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 more advanced entrepreneurship that's that's your micro state entrepreneurship that's for the the bigger guys <laughs> once yeah. they go through the get through the ropes of uh, just building their local micro factories in their in their community and showing that that could be a sustainable business model and they can manage that and make that grow and collaborate because mm -hmm. uh, until 2028 it's all about collaborating as much as possible together so that everything we do is has got a lot of energy behind it becomes the best and we move on from one to the next as a group because the the problem we're solving for is about people showing up and staying to develop in the world of open source the retention is, is an issue like how do you get people to actually stick with it well you have to get people actually doing that for a living and show that we can make make sustainable livelihood with that yes, yes. does that kind of answer your question or no it does i think you've answered even more than uh yes so wow so it, it, it it's quite big uh i yes it's 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 it, it. and I, I i i i think i really comprehend you know so i'm i'm really keen and interested and uh, once opinion. again you heard me yeah. say in my ted talk that is only the beginning so now we've got the chapters yes. uh, so the OSC camp like the chapter we talk about right now is your regional yes. your region for Rustenburg let's say yes. the advancement yes. track if you're if you grow with OSC that would be to make a national chapter like yes. that would be then for yes. South Africa yes. that could be yes. you could be someone else in South Africa yes. but it's open yes. collaboration so we can we can accept all, as many as as there are good candidates to do this um, yeah, yeah. But then yeah. again, then after that, you go to the continental chapter. I just actually conceptualized that the other day. But then the continental chapter would be, would be mm. a, a, essentially a special economic zone. Correct. You know how yes. you have like Hong Kong or Shenzhen or whatever. Yeah. Basically, start creating like something more that looks like your your autonomous microstate by default. <laughs> I mean, yeah. autonomous um, economic zones are kind of like that. Uh, but the idea yeah. is, I mean, the yeah. big big vision is like. You know, yes. world without borders kind of deal. It's like, um, uh, uh, without getting too much into the details of that, but I don't think no, like, no, 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 border, no. borders yeah. right now, I think, are kind of artificial entities that they don't really no, match like reality. Yeah. They're kind of uh, uh, human fictions in many ways. Yeah. But without getting into that, we're saying we're going we're gonna to create abundant communities. And the OSC yeah. uh, campus, the campus format, yeah. could be a way yeah. to actually build these real land-based facilities that uh, 
serve as basically points of light to reform any economy, surrounding economy. Yeah. Gotcha. Now make make a lot of sense and uh, yeah. So it's quite big. I understand because I think we've got SEZ as well, the what you call the special economic zones. And I think uh, look, uh, borders. It's you see them if you want to see them. But I, I guess in business, it's 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 it, you have to globalize things, and you really kind of have to think at not at a local level. You have to start thinking things at a much bigger bigger level. But of course, like anything else, I, I appreciate that you start, you have to start with the, you know, obviously the small first steps and obviously grow it. And then the the one part that I also appreciate is that I understand that you're trying to do this as disruptive and as repeat as possible. So, like for example, when you run the the the, the, the production, you want it to be a day, which I really appreciate, and I, I think it, it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's it's sort of that I have here. So that that's my vibe as well. But then uh, the next question that I would have obviously would be around the the requirements. Uh, I mean, it, 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 it stated quite clearly uh, in terms of capital wise what one needs to be able to raise. I think it was about 10k, uh, 10,000 US dollars uh, in, in I think 20,000 20, US dollars on in, in for the for the whole uh, entirety. But then I, I wanted to understand. Uh, so one has got a factory. He's running. He's raised this capital. So what happens is that the situation will be like on a weekly basis. Uh, whereby I saw the program obviously for the, the whole breakdown for the for the for the different uh, courses or training that one has to go through. But then. Uh, that has to be spread uh, around obviously so the two years would break that will make the time i guess much lesser than what would be required in a one in a, in a year's time and the reason why i'm asking about particularly about time i want to give my time to this uh, but my my biggest challenge is that uh, i myself personally i'm more also running other things and then i didn't want to because it's more like an income for now on my side of things and then i just wanted to know does it mean now i have to be solely into this uh, on a full-time basis or is it okay if i assemble my own team which can if i'm not available or i'm i'm, I'm unable to you know maybe attend uh, certain courses or modules or do attend to certain things uh, particularly around the program uh, it, if let me just try and simplify the question much i think I'm, I'm 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 making it a complex question just a, a simple question that i have is that in terms of one if i take up i'm able to i think because I, I i i think i'll try and source my own funding but then if i come up with all the requirements and all those uh what happens to my team how do i get the training filtrated to them uh or is the program really built for myself then i'm the one who's responsible to pass all the knowledge and the things that i learned to the team that i work with because I would understand from inception what I wanted to do was to involve a team of people, not necessarily to have staff ending with myself uh, as an individual. So my 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 wish would be to sort of have a a team of my guys involved so that yeah. information is set in them, and then I'm just not the only person from my side that does the the. How the, much the time program. do you have available to to commit to the program right now? Like. Because the way we yeah. conceptualizing yes. it, we're saying like yes. not a lot of people are going to have like, oh, yeah, drop everything and you can do this for a year yes. of time. Yes. People typically have their things. So I was thinking that, okay, two years, yeah. you can take yes. it basically 50% of the time. So essentially like a minimum of like 20 hours per week that you're doing this, you have to learn all the skills. You've got to learn the production. Yeah. You've got to learn the collaboration. Mm -hmm. yes. So... Yes. Uh, you have to mm -hmm. be able to grasp mm -hmm. the concepts mm -hmm. of okay one is the technical skills which is okay here's how we produce mm -hmm. effectively but the yes. picture is much bigger the, the bigger part of that is how do you collaborate effectively with others because to achieve yes. the goals we want to do like you said mm -hmm. it's about joining yes. with people like yourself with people who mm -hmm. are collaborating all with each other but that's a skill set what tools do you use? How do you do it? How do you scale that collaboration so that you also learn how to run a whole team of 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 people doing a hackathon or or some kind of a sprint or design or build event? That there's a whole social technology around that that you have to learn. So that's why we want. Ideally, that would be you. But if you want to have a team, yeah, I mean, that's you got to have a team, right? So. Um, 
I think that it would be good that if you were to show up, your team could show up with you, right? Yeah. I think it would be good yeah. that you you kind of, I mean, someone's kind of got to hold the mm -hmm. ultimate responsibility for that. For sure. And for that, sure. that would yeah. be you. Mm -hmm. Now, yes. do you are you thinking that you would also learn all the skills and then other people, yeah. like we can pass on the skills to others or mm -hmm. like, no, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to get this guy to do it. Or how, how no, do you no, think no, about no. it? I, yes, I I I wanna do it myself. I wanna do it all. Uh, I wanna I wanna learn everything. I'm 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 keen. I'm in uh, myself hundred percent. Not even twenty five percent of it. But then I'm just uh, thinking about. I just wanted to understand the whole philosophy of inter. Uh, sort of passing it on to obviously the other people because it will be myself, my face, and everything. But obviously, just in the background, there'll be there should be other people that are my support sort of that needs to be also involved and sort of uh, up to speed or up to date with what we're trying to sort of achieve here. Yeah. So like I said, my yeah. Yeah. my thinking was that, or my understanding was that I'm going to set up, obviously, uh, try and set up people that are also like-minded, that are always, always going to be also involved into this some way, directly or indirectly, you know. So I just wanted to see how, uh, or really to understand how do I fit everybody into the picture. Uh, so, but I think it's kind of clear. I think it's okay, much and I, I think how you've broken it down, you know. Obviously, with a two-year program, I looked at it. For me, it looked like something that I can work with, uh, definitely. Even the one year, but then I just didn't want to be... Uh, probably because there's a bit of transition because i'm also sort of at the forefront of the, the business the consulting business you know and there's about six engineers or so that we that are, that are under me and it's quite also a bit of a, a responsibility that i have on the other side so but not that being any issue or that's uh, something that can stop me from being really involved myself but there are those days that you could anticipate that you know i might not be up to sort of so at least but i saw you said somewhere that at least it needs to be two people that are also in, in front if i understood it very well, uh, well can you, I, like mm -hmm. the the ideal situation is that so yes. it's like i'm yes. mentoring you to succeed yeah right oh i see yes yes so yes. You and I basically like as we set the pace because yes. if we break the, what you saw is the one year program. Now, if it's mm. two years, then we basically do half of, you know, just extend that twice. But oh, yeah. basically yes. it would be at your pace as soon mm. as you get it. And there's going to be, mm. OK, here's mm. the, what we need to learn. Here's what you need to know. Mm. And as soon as you learn, it will be like more you tell me, OK, I'm ready for our next meeting. And we go forward. Uh, I see. Oh, you that's all the knowledge. Fun. Nah, then it's not a problem. Okay. Nah, it's fine. I think I, I get it. Yes, yes. That's 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 fine. Okay, that's, that's fine. And then we yes, yeah. So then we move forward as soon as we see that. Okay, you 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 got it. It's not like I'm just gonna post a webinar and you have to show up to it. No, it's like yeah. we're we're working closely with each other. With each other, yes, yeah. yes. No, I I get it, hundred percent, my son. Yes. Yeah. So I'm up. I'm up for for. I think yes. That. I, so I, I think I answered it. I said the two year would suit me for now uh, with my current schedule. And then okay. obviously, I guess I'm, I'm sure you are a bit flexible. If I realize that I've got a bit more time, or maybe things are a bit slower for the two year program, can I revert to maybe the one year program? Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure, sure. Just once I catch on to the speed because it's all about traction, I guess. So once you catch on to the yeah. into the movement, I think I you can so. now easily yes. So I think for now, just to to get the intro and things right, uh, just to get into the into the movement type of things, I'd rather maybe be safe and do the two year, and then obviously move on to the to the uh, the accelerated program. Uh, yep. Maybe a okay. bit later once after so the, uh, the way it could work. So so you show up, but you're welcome to have other people on a call too, and they can listen in. Yes. Okay. All right. I I I, I fully comprehend. Yes. Yeah. But I I'm teaching you. You are the the agent in authority over the south yes. african team yes. and yes. but you can have as much support and that's good that that you would have the support yes. from many other people yeah yes yes because you're also trying to pass info also knowledge you know to others you're also trying to spark the mind of others you know because i mean in my team there are people that are also might be a, a bit more creative than myself and then uh, but obviously with you know, a combination, we've realized that we can do a lot and much more uh, than what one person would do, yeah, you know. No, that's, so that's, that's, why really I was just trying to, 
I didn't want to limit everything to myself, you know, that my capabilities limits everything so that we can have much more creative juices and people that yeah. I, I mean, there's, yeah. there's guys who are like structural engineers in our team. There's guys who are like electrical engineers, uh, other process engineers and uh, the, 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 the like, although I know it's, 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 it's not really uh, the the undergrad degree behind it the whole thing is about really the creativity the spirit how you yeah. your mindset and all those things but i mean the, the skill sets i looked at the the prerequisite skill sets or what one will will learn out of it you know things like using cat being able to design right. uh, such things i've got guys who are much more also quicker in terms of doing designs uh, uh, it might not necessarily be on free cat or anything but i mean these things are interchangeable and are much more similar in terms of principles and uh, so things like that's just to be able to add that bit of uh, yeah. a, a, but just one thing mm. I must emphasize mm. to make clear um, yes the idea of tool chain uniformity yeah we call yes. that yeah. tool chain degeneracy mm. but uh, just to be okay. clear you will have to do free CAD because okay. so yes the yes. skills might be they might be able to learn it faster mm. but yes. also they might be able to learn it slower if they oh, wow. yeah. if they are not willing to have an open mind. I've seen people who know other software and they're like, oh, this is different. I'm not going to learn it because uh, mm -hmm. they don't like it. They're already used to one way of doing it. But the point is, in order for the global collaboration to happen, everyone has to be able to use the same tools. Otherwise, you always are fighting the little differences and inconsistencies. Uh, so we all use the same operating system and the same tools because mm -hmm. the only way like if you're gonna run mm -hmm. your printer that printer mm -hmm. has to be the same as my printer if we're gonna t mm -hmm. be able to collaborate mm -hmm. fully mm -hmm. on quality mm -hmm. control everything else mm -hmm. the distributed quality control re requires mm -hmm. a uniform tool set both in the software and the hardware mm -hmm. so and that's very powerful because once you have a standard mm -hmm. set that can expand worldwide in a rapid way but if you if you got like a hundred different machines, it's like one breaks and you don't have the parts and you don't know what to do. It might not if it's not open source, you wouldn't even be able to get the parts necessary. So everyone is open source, same tool chain for uniformity of the result. Does that make sense for quality control purposes? <laughs> Hundred percent. Yes, I I think I fully understand the protocol. I know the the responsibility. I know I'm even. I think I went even through the specification, and I would understand really why you're trying to do that as somebody who's uh, quite involved in also a lot of quality assurance and quality control stuff. So I I, I definitely understand that. I mean, you're it's a specification. You, it's a you've been involved in quality control stuff. Yes, we do it. I mean, once we, because we do designs, uh, what we do, we consult and not just consult, but we also design plans uh, or improve or do optimization kind of projects. And yeah. then obviously, uh, I mean, the, for one to mark something successfully, there has to be a control, a sort of con quality control uh, systems in place. So yes. I do a lot of quality stuff here. So I understand the uniformity quite, quite perfectly because yep. it's one yep. product, it's something universal. We're not trying to uh, come up with our own creative ways. I mean, rules yeah. are rules. I, I, okay. I, I fully comprehend. Okay, yes. excellent. And then, then is the next point. Yes. So tuition, uh, we covered. Yes. Now, okay, as far yes. as the materials, actually, what we can do. Yes is put that on your side. You don't have to pay us that. And I, I say that because okay. All right. I looked at shipping. And for yes. us to ship stuff over to <laughs> you, like I, I just <laughs> looked at like 20 pounds, it's like $500. That would be like yeah, one printer. Uh, the rent is at its worst now, yes. So, yes. Um, well, uh, shipping from here to there. So, so, that, so are you okay yes. with, this is different than what I wrote in the, in the, in the, in the initial proposal yes yeah. yes uh, um, I, no no i, I mean if, if, if it's locally sourceable i don't see uh, unless there's anything that's really sort of uh, right foreign to the local here but I, I think if it's if i can source it here it, it will be obviously much so the more question wiser. is uh do you yeah. have i i looked up you do have access to things like uh, va i mean various parts like stepper motors yeah. electronic parts you have you do also have access to like do you have amazon or yes yeah, so i think we we have amazon it can ship here uh we have uh yeah so we have amazon i think whatever the aliexpress that we, from we, china 
if you need to do that. Uh, DHL, is it similar to like DHL? Express. I guess we no. should have access to Chinese. No, AliExpress. That's uh, that's like that's like the oh, Amazon. Alibaba. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Is it that, the Alibaba? Stuff? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, yes, that. we do have access to that. Yes, um, yes. So okay. So the first thing that we need to verify before we go anywhere yeah. is I'll I'll send you a link to the bill of materials, and okay. can you go through each item and show me that yeah. you can actually so basically take my BOM. And convert yes. it to South Africa BOM because if we can't do that, okay. we're not going yes. anywhere with sourcing. Because I don't think no, definitely yes. I mean, because I'm mean, just just by looking at shipping costs, I do not think it will be able to make it if we have to ship stuff to you. No, I mean, besides no, you have to produce your own stuff. This the idea is you're producing locally. Yes. It's yes. It's South African made. I, 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 I think that that will be the way to go, Machan. Once I look at the bill of material or the bill, the, the bill of uh, quantities, I can then determine what, but then mostly because we, South Africa is quite industrialized, I think it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, uh, to, it should to be okay. Locally, yes, we should be fine. You know, at least Sounds we're good. still fortunate. Yes, as compared to the rest of Africa. So, uh, yeah. So, kindly, I'll, I'll, I'll like to have at least the BOM, and then I can just look at the, the yep. bill. And then I, if there's anything that I struggle with, I'll shout. But I, I doubt. I doubt yep. at this point. And then yes. for the first year, just for clarity, so so we will have a production yeah. cluster of six 3D printers. That's what we have to get up to, because then okay. you can pretty much uh, have production runs and make any, any mm. quantities you want. Um, okay. Then there's the... And that's a production machine. Now, yes, yes. And there will be like three different sizes, like one the smallest one, the yes. larger and larger. I, I went through the different types for D, 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 D3D. D3D. Yeah. D3D. Also, I, went, one, I think the three types, yes. Plus one of the universals, which is more for the, like the education part. If you're running workshops, okay. it's a lower cost, right. simpler version. Now, yeah. and then after that, these are not products yet, so these are these are still experimental, but machines that you can use, and that will be the torch Prototype table, the, almost. Yeah, yes. the filament maker, and the shredder. So you can start recycling plastic because we want to get to production of filament as soon as possible. That's what filament. I wanted to ask. In fact, yeah. I, I I saw the the philosophy quickly just on the recycling of the. So is it purely going to be recycled for the purpose of the of the printing? So you can source uh, so to make it sourceable locally. Yes. So you just really recycle the. Okay. Okay. But then. That's the idea. Uh, Yes, but in terms of then the quality specification, let's say you're doing like your 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 core drillers. Obviously, there's there's various materials, and obviously the recycling has to also be quality controlled right. to get obviously the, the the correct compositions and all that material chemistry. So how do you control that? Because recycling that's, is also yeah, yes. absolutely, and that's where we have to build those mm. skills in house. So we have we will have the, okay. all the quality okay. control protocols that we have to develop. Yes. And that will depend. Yes, that's on what I wanted to say. Yes, are you have you developed in that? Because I, no. I think I can also come in there just to have a look as well, because it's my area of interest as well. You know, exactly, and that's why we need to work together because mm -hmm. we need to develop mm -hmm. that for every location. Because mm -hmm. your materials will be, okay. they might be different than ours. So definitely, each location that's what I, yeah. needs to mm -hmm. have its localized production sort and quality of. control tool chains. No, makes sense then. Okay, because then I think you can only. If you want to really make it economical, you can only source it local or try and make it as local as possible, I guess. Yeah, and I mean, first you might, you'll probably mm -hmm. be buying the fil 3D printing filament mm -hmm. from the off yes. the shelf, yes. um, whatever South Africa has. Yes. But yes. after that, I mean, we want to, we want to do it because then you, you're reinventing yes. the circular economy. No, it, it, interesting. And then my my next question, just on that, I just also just want to see uh, if I can read up on a, on a bit of ways uh, in which one can look at the recycling process. But then what I wanted to know, uh, because now with the control that you've got in place, we we purely just going to start with the cordless uh, drillers, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Well, no, in terms no, we of... don't have that. We haven't done that yet. Oh, as okay. far as right. the okay. as far as the revenue model for the printers that yes. was that's from 3d printer sales or yes which yes. we're i mean that's that's part of the deal we're saying we're making an assumption here okay. that there is a market yes. for selling 3d okay. printers but uh, that's a question i okay. mean do, is that yes. is that gonna yes. work 
Oh, I see. Yes. No, definitely. Uh, I'm, I'm sure like this slide, I mean, the, the, it, it's definitely going to work. Uh, so uh, obviously there's going to be, have to be an input in terms of sales, marketing. Uh, uh, I, one thing I'm sure, uh, I mean, the biggest revenue will be from the educational side. And then uh, you also have that industrial support that you could have. But then on the educational side, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of buying, definitely. So yeah. yeah, but obviously yeah, they are, they are, they are like you say. I think much and the idea is also to explore a few things as well. One would also once he's on board, be able to so also start thinking about other ways of trying to maybe also advise you in terms of what I I I, I might think would be things maybe to consider as well. Uh, yeah, because like I, is that yeah. I mean, yes. right now we know that running the education immersion, build workshops, yes. and selling printers. Yes. That's yes. that's capable of sustaining us, right? Yes. Um, yes, yes. That's why we're saying, okay, let's try that as step number yes. one for South Africa. If we yes. find we need to pivot to some other things, I mean, there's the whole realm of okay, now you've got the three D printers. What about making yeah. parts? Mm. How soon can we get that cordless mm. drill as a product, or a three D mm. printed electric motor, mm. or just plumbing mm. fittings, mm. or yes. rubber gaskets? Mm. Yes, belts, yes. rubber belts. You can yeah, print them. Yeah, it's, it's endless. Yes, yes. Shoes. I mean the potential. Start, they are not really making shoes. You don't. So <laughs> exactly, because it's really just a desktop manufacturing. You know, it's yeah. it's it would not be simplified more than that. Yes. So I that I know. I'm 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 definitely following. I follow. I follow. I noticed. Uh, so I googled if there's any 3D printer companies in South Africa. There are some. Some of them are yeah. selling other printers. But so it's there's a yeah. little bit of it in south africa but it's, yes, yes you can make it grow yeah no true yes because i know they uh, a lot of guys what would they would do uh, would be obviously get a lot of these things i guess from because i i think there's a lot of things that you see online when you say you google 3d printers but then it depends on the support and all those kind of things because sometimes you you just get something online and then you just build it at the back of your house but then if you're not really familiar in terms of knowing what goes into that and I mean it becomes a problem so I think support and all those kind of things becomes a, a the next challenge for those guys that do have that thing uh, so but the, the market I think and, it's, it's right it's okay. and we have mm -hmm. a very unique value proposition that's the lifetime design because you understand everything okay. it's easy to yes. build therefore yes. you can maintain it for a lifetime yeah the other printers yeah. they're gonna last you one or two years but that's what I'm saying. Yes, then you keep on buying that, which is where they want you to keep on buying the aftermarket spares, and then you you into that trap, and then you basically not even you know uh, yeah. seeing any potential out of that. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm 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 keen, and then I think obviously one would also add a bit of value in terms of the product uh, uh, that we can do as well around there. You know. Uh, so I think I'll, I'll just also Absolutely. have a look we in terms of that, just to explore my mind and see yeah. what also would be could be applicable and maybe advise you in our next sitting and yeah. discuss those ideas. Yes. Okay. All right. All right, my friend. I think I'm happy. Uh, and then uh, I would really love to know how we. Obviously, we there, there is no formal way in, to, in terms of kick. I, I would I would deem this as a kickoff sort of meeting. Uh, so because I'm I'm really a kind of person I don't want to put too much words into things. I, I prefer to just jump into it and then roll okay. the sleeves and get going. Okay. So obviously, uh, the next point, I believe from your side, I'll receive the bomb and then I'll just uh, start with the sourcing process for the material. And then I, I should advise once I'm sorted with the issue of land because I'm trying to look for space, this, the space that I'm targeting. Uh, once I've got that space, I'll also keep you up to date and tell you that I've got the yeah. space. space I'm really, as in, yeah, hmm. like you just need like a thousand, hundred square meter space i mean it could be as small as oh. like no i mean as far yes. as the micro factory itself the space for where you yes. do the production i mean that's only yes. like as little as like you know 50 square meter outside. space yeah if you have a building yes. anywhere that you can put this thing in but you've got to house your printers and your production somewhere yes. so basically like yes. shelves with parts and a bunch of printers yes. Yes. and yes. yeah okay. yeah All right. and okay. once you yes. get to the torch well, table space where you can yes. have um sparks flying yep yep so there's a bit of safety and, and 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 so you might need a bit of a bigger space and then uh, just the other thing that i also wanted to ask uh because i think i've taken you up on the live live track 
uh, guys uh, sorry uh, initially uh, our guys uh, because we were also just also trying to look at ways uh, i know that this, you're not dealing with that chapter at the moment you're just looking at the 3d printers that's fine for for us i understand that i follow everything but in terms of with the interest that our guys were, 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 were having in the life track as a side project on our spare time uh, can we get a bit of support from your side if we need it because the guys wanted to kick start but i don't want to anything to contradict or interject what we'll be doing on a on a on a, on a sort of full-time basis i know the, the the what we're doing is a it's a different chapter is the 3d printers but out of interest the guys were asking me about the life track and then just wanting to know because they've taken a particular interest and just looking at it and uh, seeing if it's something that can be built uh, as well locally but that's just something on the side is it uh, possible or is it too much uh, at this um, point in time well are these guys uh, who are these guys are no this is my team I'm, i mean my team uh, okay. just to team. sort of yes 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 i'm not talking people outside because like i'm saying i i am I'm, I'm i'm trying to also have a team that is sort of uh well we, we let me just put it this way that we 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 want to have an engineering team as well that is sort of involved so that like i said the 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 tractor or sort of sparked our interest earlier on yeah you know, even myself yeah. included you well, know, I shouldn't maybe expect myself yes, i would say yes. can we delay this conversation until so so let's do some of the due diligence okay. to the actual uh, no problem. You formally okay. becoming a trainee, okay? okay. So that means just a okay. little due diligence, like I spec'd out in the pro yeah. process. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's take it after that. As soon as we get to that stage, if you're on board, okay. Uh, okay. I think I'd be willing to definitely talk about that more. Yeah. No problem. Then yes, I just I also didn't want to intercept too much, but it was just something yeah. that I. I Yes, no, but I, I, I truly understand. It's easier just to do. So I, I, it's fine. Let's just if we'll finish this then. Okay. Yeah, let's finish but one thing at a time here, and of course, I mean, my interest is that this thing, of course, takes off in different locations. So, yes. yeah. No problem at all. But the question okay. is time and you know focus. To, okay, let's do let's do this. Mm -hmm. Let's make sure this gets mm -hmm. on the road, and then let's talk let's talk about uh, the tractor because because I mean. Part of it is if yeah. you're going to talk about local production, that's where you would need that torch yes. table, which is a little yes. bit down the road, mm. right? Yes. yes. But first, correct. yes, you can. I can, you know, perhaps I can get you guys started with respect to the free CAD yes. yes. and just yes. drawing yes. that up and, and start taking off where we, where we left off with our version. So uh, yes. that could be, yes. we could, we could get into that pretty quickly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fine. That, that's, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. I I truly understand one thing at a time, perhaps, just to get the the the, the focus and everything yeah. else uh, going perfectly well. Yes. No, no, that that's fine. Then, Martin, I respect that. And then uh, I'll just get going with the. I look forward to then the the the, the yeah. BOM. And yeah. then I don't know from my side. Uh, what could be expected this week because i also saw the the issue of logging uh yeah. obviously i didn't want to to jump i wanted to follow the protocols so yeah. what does one log like for instance uh is it anything from the design point of view or do we just generally what what really yeah. goes into the log yes. so so the concept of the log is that yes. i'm not just working with you i'm working with the world you know many people we are working yes. with the world right so that's yeah. the first mindset in order for anybody else to collaborate yeah. you need to tell them what you're doing so the way we communicate it without without any effort is just log what you have done like if you have a file 3d cad file put it up on your log if you if you did some research put up the relevant work so you're teaching me and i'm teaching you like for example you can look at my log which is march and log um on the wiki and i've seen it and you can yes. click on anything and you see what i wrote or what i learned about a new design or whatever i log everything so that you can take it and we can collaborate readily like you don't have to ask me oh well send me your file no it's already there just take a look at it and let me know what you what you, what you think you know uh, great stuff, because we're yes. working openly so there is no of course no competitive waste we're not wasting any time yeah. trying to protect stuff yes. or anything like that we're no, focusing no, no, no. Yes. on creation and to do that sure. we publish everything yes. and that's how we're going to change stuff, the world 
Yes, I, I truly believe in that. That's powerful. And it's, yes. So I just wanted to understand the protocol because I'm, I'm the kind of person that also want to sort of follow the right, the right channels. I didn't yeah. want to come in and you know, start doing my own things. So that when I go there, I know at least it's a platform particularly for, because I know you've said a lot of platforms for different things. So I just also want to sort of have things in the right order. You know, yeah, how, the wiki I, is our universal repository. We have part libraries sure. for machines. You have the logs yes. of the people, and then we can link yes. to other things from there. But that's like, you from know, like there. they have GitHub for yeah. software. We have the yes. wiki, yes. and then sometimes yes. we link to GitHub or GitLab. But yes. yeah, there's uh, wiki is our repository of of designs. Okay, yeah. okay, no, then great stuff. In then. Collaboration, yep. Okay, awesome. I think I'm I'm happy from awesome. my side. I don't know if there's anything from your side. Well, I think that does it for now. So let's let's. Uh, okay. So, so first thing is we take a look at just just verify that you can source the things in, in South Africa. Because if not, we we really um, have to have another discussion on that uh, to reevaluate. Yes. And then let's complete the yes. the onboarding process. So we you're officially as a yes. OSC chapter in training. Um, Yes, no, okay. it's true. true that, yes. So I, I think I'll, I'll uh, uh, it will be quick for me. I can verify almost immediately once I've got the bomb. So okay. uh, maybe I think, I don't know how, how is your timing. What is the best way for one to get back to you to give you feedback? Once yeah. I, I, I'll I, send you an email. Like I'll, I'll send you all the links right after we hang up then. Okay, all right. And then I'll just go through the bomb and reply quickly to you. But yeah. then I'm sure but, I should be well, able to get everything. Well, what I need like there's a list of about 50 items so basically i want to see what you what you what you find so so next to my link there'll be links yes. where you can see exactly yes. what the part is paste in yes. the link that you have because then we can sum it up and then we can actually say oh the printer is going to cost okay. this much in south africa just for the parts okay all right i mean that we need to know then. that so one is availability and two yes. are the total cost no, that's fine. Yes, I, in fact, yeah. I can, I think, also do the, the cost breakdown. Because yes. I'm just thinking about an associate of mine who does uh, electric panels and all those kind of yeah. things. I'm sure I, I should be able to source a lot of uh, uh, servos and all those kind of things from him. But I, I just see what I can get. And, yeah. yeah, yeah. just show me the link so that it's verifiable. And that also is like, for, you know, the next guy we talk to from South Africa, yeah. we say, okay, we already have this. Can you improve this. on that? Because, you know? yeah. I mean, for example, Definitely. for the bill of materials, it's all always yes. about then you optimize the bill of materials. Well, maybe there's better sourcing, yes. other sourcing. Yes. So so that's all public documents. Ah, great stuff then. I do that, my friend. Yes. Okay, awesome. excellent. All right. Thank you. Okay, well, thank I you think... so much. And okay. yeah, we'll, we'll be in touch. Yes, definitely. Okay. okay. Cheers then. Cheers. Bye. Bye-bye.